So let's continue what we started in the previous session. I showed you two key features of uh, virtualization. Like I said, consolidation and isolations are very important features of virtualization. And almost every virtualization has these two features. And I showed you that we can virtualize the LAN and create VLAN. And when you create VLANs, it seems like you do not have one switch. It seems that one switch you know, becomes multiple switches. Now these are not complete rectangles, but that's okay. You know what I mean. In VRF, what happens is this. You do not use just your physical rudder. One rudder looks like multiple rudders. Now they do not really look like rudders, but you know what I mean. Okay, so this is the concept that we have here. Now before continue, let me talk about uh, different types of VRFs. I'm co of course, I'm not going to go deep into them right now. We am going to, you know, show you the complete configuration and everything about them in later sessions. But you should know that we have two types of VRFs. One is the actual VRF that everybody talks about. One is a VRF that nobody talks about so much, as a matter of fact. Uh, the actual VRF, which is called VRF, of course, it uses labeling in layer 3, exactly like what you have in layer 2. When you have VLANs, you add some tags to that to make sure that you know this traffic belongs to which VLAN. And VRF uses labels, uh, again, exactly the same as uh, what we use tags in VLANs. The VRF is implemented in MPLS and multi-protocol BGP. So when you use VRF, as a matter of fact, you are talking about VRF with MPLS most of the time. In contrast, VRF Lite is kind of VRF without MPLS. So when you are talking about VRF Lite, you are talking about just one rudder most of the time, which is virtualized, and you do not really extend this. You can extend this to multiple rudders, but you do not really go for that, because extending it to multiple rudders is going to give you headache. So what you do is to just suffice to virtualize on one rudder. And most of the time, you're talking about office lands or small data centers or sometimes you just go with virtualization of security zones on just one router again like i said i'm going to talk about this in depth let's go for some other slides and see what we have there here again the concept of you know virtualization of a router is there like i said it looks as if there are multiple routers and each one of them has its own routing table which is very important to understand we can have multiple routing tables, each one of them separate from the other one. They do not really know about each other unless we want to. And the next thing is we can use it with multiple protocols and even VPNs, which we are going to configure. And I'm going to show you what they are in a later session. So we have some key features like route distinguisher, which is very important to understand. What is a route distinguisher? Like I said, we can have multiple routing tables inside the router. So this is the first one, this is the second one. Let's say that the first one has a route of 10, 10, 10, 0, slash 24. The second one can have a route of 10, 10, 10, 0, slash 24. And I said in previous session that this is okay. Overlapping routes are okay. We can distinguish them from each other. How? By adding a route distinguisher. Let's say it is like a color. I'm going to add a tag in front of this. Let's say that this is for this routing table because it has a red label on that. And this one has a magenta uh, label on that. I have colored the routes, so each one belongs to uh, one of these routing tables. And Route Distinguisher does this, as a matter of fact. It is important on 
just the local router. When transferring the routes, route distinguisher doesn't do anything. But on a local router, it is very important to understand that this one is not going to be mixed with the other one. How can I do that? Like I say, I'm going to add a 64-bit value to the beginning of these routers. And this is going to be carried along with the route, but like I said, most of the time we call this local significance. It means that in transition, it doesn't do anything. We prepend it to the prefix, and we send it to other routers, so that they know that, again, this belongs to this specific routing table. Now, like I said, this is a 64-bit value. And what does this 64-bit value show us? We can, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, present it in different ways. There are three types of presentation. Uh, the first one, of course, says that what type of field we are talking about. So two bytes of this, eight bytes, is going to be allocated to type field. But we are going to be left with six more bytes. Now, this six more bytes can be used in three different ways, like I said. We can have an AS number in the beginning and then assign a four-bot sequence number to the end. This is type 0. We can have an IP address like the, like, like, brother IP, for example, in the beginning and then add a sequence number to the end. Or we can have an AS number in the beginning with four bytes, of course, and then a sequence number in the end. Now, this means that we can have something like 10, 10, 10, 1, then a colon here. Then, for example, 272. This is one type of, you know, uh, notation, which is type 1, as a matter of fact. You see, this is IP address, and then the sequence number after that. But who does this, as a matter of fact? This is a very hard way to show this. What I really need to is a, some simpler way so that I can see that and I understand it easier. So most of the time what I do is to use two numbers. So the last notation is the one that most of network administrators or network experts go with. A number here, a colon, and another number here, like 1, 1. Right? Now it doesn't really matter what number you are going to do use here, but what is important is you can just distinguish this from another one. Now we add this to the beginning of the prefix which we are going to install in our routing information base. So I have 1-1 one, one in the beginning, and then let's say that 10-10-10-0-24. Now this is the color one, right? Based on this I can tell this belongs to the first routing table. If I have something like, for example, 3 101, then 10, 10, 10, 0, slash 24. I can say the second one has another route distinguisher, so they are not going to be mixed. Each one of them is going to go to, into one routing table. So this is what a uh, route distinguisher is. But there is another concept which a lot of people mix with route distinguisher. Like I said, route distinguisher is locally significant. But route target is significant in transit, which is very important to understand. The format of route target is kind of similar to route distinguisher. But what route target does is this. I'm going to have this router here connected to another router here. Now this is going to have this routing table and for this specific VRF, a routing table on the other side, which need to be in sync, right? This is what routing means. Now, I want to make sure that anything from this is going to be installed in this and vice versa. So what should I do? I say, when I am sending this to the other side, I say that I am exporting this. 
with a specific value like one one this is going to say I am importing just routes that have one one not the route distinguisher this is an extra value like I said so this is going to say I'm exporting with one one and the other side says okay you exported this with one one so anything that comes with one one I'm going to install it in here and it says I am exporting everything with let's say two two this means that the other side needs to mean make sure that anything with two two is going to be imported do they have to be different? No, of course. I can say I'm exporting with 1.1, one, one. the other one is going to receive 1.1, one, one. and the other side says, okay, I am exporting with 1.1. One, one. It doesn't have anything to do with the importing, of course, but like I said, I, I just separated the value so that you can understand easier. So again, they are, you know, um, assigned to the values, to the routes, so that the other side knows which one is going to be imported in one of these. Now, can I import one of these into multiple routing table on the other side? It is possible. Let's say that I have another routing table here, and for some reason, anything from that side that comes from uh, the other side with a route target of 1.1, one, one, needs to be imported here as well so I can do that I can say I am importing one one as well so this is possible uh, there are scenarios which we are going to cover and tell you what are the situations in which we do this but right now we are going to just go with this